Hi there, I'm Sarah Mee, and um, today I'm going to be showing you how to sew the collar and collar stand clean finished on a shirt neckline. Uh, for this project, you're going to need your shirt up to this point so the yoke is sewn on and your placket is finished so that your neckline is ready to go. And um, you will need your collar stands. I have my uh, top collar stand my inner collar stand. I did a contrast so it would be easy for you to see. And then I have interfacing on the back of my outer collar stand. I just use a um, poplin for this. You can use whatever you like. And for the collar, I have the top collar and the under collar. This particular under collar has a seam right here. And then I have the interfacing, again, just a poplin that's on the um, top collar. Uh, typically the pattern will have a top and under collar and I recommend you cutting them both out, not just two top colors because the collar will look nicer if you use the under collar pattern. It's slightly smaller and then it pulls the fabric to the underside so that the under collar doesn't sneak out on top of the collar when you're wearing it. All right, so we're ready to go. Um, the last thing I think you need to know is your markings. So for this, I like to have the center back neck marked right here. And if you don't have a marker, you can fold your shirt in half and clip it a little bit, just like this. Clip it right at the center there, just a tiny bit, um, so that you have a very visible indication of what the center is. You, on, on your collar stand, you're going to need the center back at the top, the center back at the neck. You're gonna need whatever the marking is here, whether it go to a shoulder seam or a yoke seam, um, there should be a mark right here. And then um, most of the time there's also a mark here at the front of the collar and that is where this collar starts and stops. Not all patterns have it. If yours has it, it's really helpful, but I'm gonna show you how to sew this um, even if you don't have that notch. For the collar, you pretty much only need the center back notch right here and this is the bottom of the collar so this is the outer perimeter as you're wearing it the part that will be clean finished this seam goes into the collar stand you just need this one here and um, you can do it on the center of your under collar as well mine has a seam so I don't really need it all right so uh, we're set to go let's get sewing Okay, the first thing to do is you're going to sew a stay stitch around the neckline. Now, it's good to refer to your pattern to find out what the seam allowance is on your neckline and your collar pieces. I'm going to highly recommend that whatever they are, you cut them down to one quarter inch. The collar will look much nicer, be far easier to sew, and it'll be a little less to um, manage, and I think you're going to like the result a lot better. So whether your seam allowance is three eighths, a half inch, five eighths, whatever it is, cut it down to a quarter of an inch and you, um, I'll show you how to do that on your collar and collar stands as well. And then we're going to sew a stay stitch around the neckline, especially on a fabric like this, which is a chambray, it can tend to stretch a little bit. It's got more of an open weave. Anything like linens, hemp's, um, anything slinky like a rayon, I would definitely make sure you add this quarter inch stay stitch. And you're just going to start, just go just inside the quarter of an inch seam line just a little bit and don't pull on your shirt as you go. Maybe you have a presser foot that is um, has a quarter inch width between the needle and the edge and you can use it as a guide. This is going to stabilize the neckline and make it so that this doesn't get stretched out. You see all this curve here? This can make it very stretchy and then your collar won't fit and the collar is not um, on a curve at all and it's usually cut on the length grain, so there's a lot less stretch, so it's pretty easy to finagle it on there if your neckline gets stretched out. All right, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is your seam allowances on your collar. So for the collar stand, you're going to trim down the entire perimeter down to a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Just cut it right off and make sure you transfer these markings that we already talked about, your notches. Um, it, if you, makes you a little nervous, just know that you will be trimming this off at some point anyway, and it makes sewing these curves and making it very clean and keeping all the layers lined up a lot easier if you just trim it down to a quarter of an inch. And you're gonna do it on this long curved edge and along the neckline edge, because that thing's gonna, that's gonna get sewn to that neckline. On the collar here, same thing, you're gonna cut it down 
to a quarter of an inch on the entire perimeter. Um, if you have that seam right here, you can just sew that at whatever seam allowance it came with. It doesn't matter as much. All right, so the first thing we're going to sew is the collar. So you're going to take your top and under collar and line them up. Again, I like the interfacing to go to the top collar because it's the one that's going to show to the world. I'm going to sew it at my quarter inch seam allowance. We'll, we'll sew it with our under collar facing up since it is typically a little bit smaller so you can see. So you're just going to try and keep this raw edge lined up even if it feels like it's too small because of the mount that was trimmed off. That trimming is worth it and to get to that corner sometimes you want to walk your machine. You can see my, my presser foot going up and down there. My foot is controlling that. Anytime you stop and pivot at a corner, stop with your needle down, lift up your presser foot, and then pivot. It'll make it a lot easier. So I'm getting all these edges lined up there. You can see that little bit right there is a difference, and that's the amount that it's going to be short on the top once we press it. That way it'll pull the fabric to the underside. Alright, so now I stop with my needle down, pick up my presser foot, pivot, keep all these edges lined up, and backstitch. Alright, so now we're going to trim away this corner. Now a lot of people like to just lop it off like that. I like to trim away a little bit more on the sides here to reduce as much bulk in there as possible. So I just kind of cut around the corner just like this. And now we're going to turn it right side out. And use whatever method that you like. There's a lot of uh, really handy um, methods for getting a nice collar point out there. Just going to do it real quick here. And I'm going to use my awl. Press my collar point out here. And so we're going to take this to the iron and press it. And then you'll see that once these raw edges are lined up, that the top collar gets pulled to the underside. That way, none of it, the underside sneaks out on the right side. All right, so now um, let's press this and then we're going to sew our collar stand. Okay, we have the iron nice and hot and I do have a steam setting for this since it is cotton. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay this out flat like this and let the seam allowance press whatever way it wants to and just press this whole thing right here as well as I can without trying to get any of the other collar in there. And that way when I go to press it like this, lining up the raw edges, it'll be a little easier because that's nice and smooth now. So now I'm going to line up all these raw edges right here. You can do that same trick on the ends here if you like to. So make sure you get your raw edges nice and lined up and then you're going to press that. Just like that. Get rid of that thread in a bit. And you can see that my top collar now is on the underside a little bit that way when it's when it's being worn this won't sneak out especially if you're using a contrast fabric all right so now we're ready to sew our collar stand to our collar okay so we've pressed the collar and now we want to either top stitch it or under stitch it before we sew it to the collar stand so um, top stitching it you're just going to go around the perimeter of this sewn seam and maintain a parallel distance to the finished seam. I'm going to show you how I understitch it because I know that that is also a technique that um, you don't see very often, um, especially when you have to deal with these points. So what I like to do is, because I, I let the seam allowance inside press the way it wanted to when I ironed it, it's naturally pressing toward the collar, the under collar and makes it a little easier. So you want to press the seam allowance towards the under collar. Get as close to that point as possible. You're not going to be able to get all the way up there. And then you're going to stitch it down. And this will also reinforce that seam not rolling to the outside of the collar. Just keep that seam allowance pressed toward the collar. I'm going to turn my collar a little bit inside out to be able to get as close to this edge as possible. There we 
go. So now our collar is understitched, just like that, and it's nice and clean on the outside. If you want to understitch the ends, you can do so as well. Um, it can help, especially if the under collar wasn't very small, and you need a little bit of help pulling that seam to that one side. Last one. I'm usually a fan of top stitching it, but sometimes I really do like to leave the collar uninterrupted on the top nice and clean like this. All right, so now we're ready to sew the collar stand to the collar. So remember, your interfacing goes to the outer collar, and say you have a contrast um, collar stand just like I do, and you want that to be on the inside of the collar so that it looks like this when you're wearing it. Here, let me put this the other way so you can tell. Because this is a little bit confusing if you're wanting that look. So if you want to be wearing your shirt like this, like this is how it looks when you're wearing it and your collar stand on the inside is a contrast. What you need to do is sew your under collar facing the outer collar and the lining to be right side to the out the top collar. So this is our outer collar. This is the one that's going to show to the world, and we want our lining to be facing that. All right. So just in case you don't have that little notch right here, I told you about, so that you'd know where to start your collar right there. You can start from the center. Otherwise, it's kind of a mystery. I don't have my center marked on here, so let's mark that. Do a little notch there. Just make sure you keep it really small. Usually when I notch things, I nip into the fabric a little bit, but this is nice and visual and makes it easy for you to see. Just make sure you remember you have your own quarter inch seam allowance. All right, so let's line up all these raw edges on that center mark, and we're gonna start sewing right there. You don't have to back stitch, but I'm going to, because we're gonna back stitch on the other one as well. All right, so we're gonna line up all these raw edges right here. Make sure you definitely keep your collar raw edges all lined up right there, because remember that top, that bottom collar is a little smaller and it may wanna push a different way. All right, so keep all these edges nice. Don't pull. You can see that's where that notch lines up with that top collar, just like that. There's the notch. Keep those raw edges. You really want to keep that under collar smaller. And then when you get to this curve, try not to stop sewing. Once you get into this little curve here, just try and even if you go slow, just keep a nice even speed and don't stop. You'll get a nice smooth curve a little easier that way. And you can see I'm pivoting right here with this finger. I'm kind of pushing and pivoting right there. All right, so now we're going to do the other side. And the same thing, we'll start at the center back. And again, the reason I'm doing that is because if you don't have this notch right here, you wouldn't know where to place the collar right there by starting here and sewing. Because that this collar is not the same shape as that neckline. It's usually an opposite curve and it is a little tricky. All collars are dra drafted a little differently. Oh, we're gonna start from the center, that's right. All right back stitch. And same thing, we're gonna keep all these raw edges lined up. I'm more important about the fabric raw edges than the interfacing. So if my interfacing goes a little bit off, that's fine. I'm more, import more important, I want to work on the fabric pieces. Especially since my interfacing is a different material than my collar, it may react differently. All right. That nice and okay I've got my curve I'm gonna try and keep sewing without stopping there we go all right so now we're gonna clip this curve right here just a little bit you can see if you had a 5 8 inch seam allowance right now you would this is this curve can be really tricky to keep it nice and smooth it's a lot of seam allowance and you need to trim that down now All right, so just a little bit around that curve. And now we're gonna turn it right side out. Just 
just like this. And we're going to press it. We don't really have to press it right now, but we're going to. Um, and then um, we're going to attach it to the neckline. One or two more steps left. Okay, we've pressed our collar stand. And remember, if you have sewn this curve nice and smooth and you're still getting some little flat sections, look back in there and make sure that all of your clips go right up to the seam allowance. You don't want to go through it, of course, but just go right up to it. It'll really help. And maybe add a few, make them closer together. And the more clips, the more of a curve you're going to get. All right, so this is what my collar's looking like now. Here is my under collar. You can see there's the um, understitching that we did earlier. Here's my outer collar stand. So remember when I fold it over, that's what the world's gonna see. And then on the inside is my contrast collar stand, and then this is my top collar. So that's how it's gonna look. All right, and the markings, remember that you need are the center back, and you need that shoulder or yoke notch, whatever it happens to be. Uh, on your pattern. The, this isn't, you know, always the yoke, or, I mean, this isn't always the shoulder um, on the body, but it is a nice landmark while you're sewing your neckline with the collar stand. All right, so the trick with the way I do this is I start from the inside of the garment, um, and then I go to the outside of the garment. And this way you get a nice result every time and you can control the way it looks on the outside without worrying if you're catching the inside of that collar stand or that you're sewing it in the right spot. So make sure that you have your stay stitch and your placket is sewn. This is where you're at, right? And you're going to line up on the inside of your garment, the lining side of your collar stand. So this is the inside of my collar and it's the inside of my garment. And we're gonna line these up. And at first I'm gonna start pinning like maybe at the shoulder here and at the center back. And I'm just pinning the inside collar stand. I'm not worried about the outer one. I'm just gonna leave it flopped down like that. So we're gonna start here. You can put as many pins as you like on here. Don't pre-clip the neckline. That makes it a lot harder to sew. All right, and so when you get to these center front pieces here, what I like to do is open up the collar stand like this, and I like to push the seam allowance one direction and I like to line up the seam like that. It's kind of like I lay it on there. So this is nice and flat and open and I can really see accurately where I'm laying that placket. I'm gonna get rid of these threads right here so that they don't sneak out of my seam and get hard to trim later on. All right, so we're gonna do that. And you may need to adjust that when you go to sew it as well. So make sure you check it. So you can put as many pins in your neckline as you want. I'm actually gonna even up my interfacing here so that it's not confusing and I don't accidentally line up my neckline based on that. All right, so again, I open up the, oh, I lost my back tack here by doing that. So let's put the back tack back in. All right, so we have our collar stand opened up there and we're lining it up on the placket edge there push the seam allowance. I like to push it towards the outer collar. So that way when I lay the placket right there, it kind of nestles in there because this is thick and this is thick. This is thick and this is thick right here. You may need to adjust it a little more when you go to sew, but it'll help tremendously opening it up and laying it on there. All right. All right, so we're gonna sew this now. We're gonna start at that center front edge there. My pins are kind of long for that. Line it up there. So right on that quarter inch seam, it's very awkward. I understand that, I know it's really awkward, but once you get it in the machine, the needle is down, you've sewn a couple stitches, now you can sit here and play with it and get it lined up and maybe you have more pins in yours so it won't be so finicky. I uh, like to have a lot of um, flexibility while I'm sewing so I don't add a lot of pins. All right, so we've got our collar stand. I've got my next landmark, which is that shoulder seam right there, or yoke seam. And I kind of hold, I'm holding my whole collar here. 
and holding the whole thing with my right hand. And I'm going to sew just to the left of my stay stitch. I don't want my stay stitch to show on the outside of the garment. So you may need to pull these layers a little bit to keep them lined up along the raw edges. Make sure you keep your edges lined up at the raw edges. Go as slow as you like. Once you do this first one, the next one's a lot easier, I promise. So just spend your time on this one. Remove your pins as you go, if you like, so they don't poke you. So just to the left of that stay stitch, I can feel it under there. It's right there, I can feel it. You can draw your seam allowance with a washable marker or a piece of chalk or something if that helps you. All right, here's the center back. I try and keep my whole garment here relaxed and flat as possible and I kind of move it as I go so that there's no buckling happening under there and I don't have to worry about that. So I'm keeping these edges nice and lined up, all those raw edges. I'm pulling a little bit, keeping it nice and taut without stretching it. And now here I am at the shoulder. And see, I kind of make sure that this is nice and flat there. There's no wrinkles. If you've maintained your um, seam allowances the whole time you've sewn this and you cut it out really accurately and your fabric's not too finicky, this should all line up really well as long as the pattern was drafted correctly. All right, so here we are. This is one of the trickier areas because the front uh, neckline is a little curvier. And now we're getting to the center front neckline. So make sure that you're not going to end up with more fabric on either layer. I already took my pin out, but like I said, I like to kind of maneuver it as I go. And I'm keeping this open. This is the collar stand. I'm going to lay it on there again. And sometimes I like to get my all out and kind of place it on there. So remember, one thing to remember is where your quarter inch seam allowance is. Your quarter inch seam allowance is like right here, right? So this right here is the point that needs to land at that point there. That's what you can do. So sometimes you can kind of poke a pin in there and go, okay, that needs to land right there. It's non-negotiable. You tell it, you let it know that you're the boss. And it'll be a little weird angle like that. See, it looks kind of like a weird angle. But here we go, we got it. I've got my seam allowance a little bit off there. But for the most part, that looks pretty darn good. All right, so we're going to clip the neckline. You can look at the other side. Make sure you didn't get any tucks if you want. It's easier. Now you're going to clip this neckline. Make sure you're really careful and don't catch your shirt underneath. Go around. Clip your whole neckline. It'll release the tension of the straight edge being sewn to the curved edge and it'll lay a lot nicer once the seam allowance is pressed up into the collar stand and it'll make the next step a little easier. It also um, makes the neckline less tight. Now if you have that 5 8 inch seam allowance still on there you're going to probably want to trim that down. Um, it'll be a little cumbersome. It's also kind of hard to keep it accurate. I know probably sewing that center front could be a little easier with that wider seam allowance but um, I would definitely trim it down afterward. All right, a few more clips. And then we're gonna head to the iron and we're gonna iron that last step and then we'll be done. Here, I'll show you how it's looking right now. So this is the inside of my garment. It's nice and clean finished with that collar stand now. We don't even have to worry about that now. So the last step we have, we're gonna be sewing it on the right side I think the first few times I figured out I could do it this way, I got a little nervous that I had all this raw um, edges showing on the right side. But remember, you're going to clean all that up and you have complete control over how it's going to go at this point because now the inside's done. It doesn't matter where your needle falls on the inside. You'll get better and better at it and it'll always land on the collar stand eventually. Um, so let's get ironing and um, we'll be finished in a jiff. Okay, here we go. Here's our shirt. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just open up the shirt. This is the right side or the outside of my shirt, that collar kind of in the center there. And I'm just going to press the collar stand into, or the seam there, into the collar stand. Just like this. Same thing over here. 
pull it so that's nice and smooth so I'm not getting any uh, tucks on the back there. Nice and smooth. All right, and so now we're gonna start pinning. If you wanted to pre-iron this edge, you can do that, but I don't recommend it. Um, this gives you more flexibility. Because we've pressed this right here and ironed it, we know that that's nice and smooth. We're not gonna get any buckling because we're gonna pay attention, right? So take your center back. I like to start from the center and do my landmarks and then I pin in between. So I keep the center notches nice and lined up. Now, if you sewed it a little bit off, like both your centers are a little off, keep the notches lined up one on top of the other. That way you don't get any torquing like this. You wanna pin it just, or fold it just past that seam line, just like that. Pin into the fold, perpendicular, just like that. Let's do the shoulder now. You can see I kind of smooth everything out, pull my collar like this, that way I know the underside is not buckling at all. And same thing, I want to line up those notches. You're turning under a quarter of an inch seam allowance, maybe a little less, maybe a little more. Just make sure that the underside, the other collar stand, is nice and smooth. You're not getting any buckling here. All right, and so when I get to the center fronts, this is gonna be a little easier than sewing it. I open it up again, and I push those seam allowances, kind of wrap it around. I like to press this one under at the same time. Wrap it around, and I just fold it like that. So let's get one in there. I'll smooth out any bumps I get. I just like to get a few pins in there. Nothing set in stone yet. So now I can work on this little section here. And I usually start in the middle, you know, kind of like when you're marking buttonholes. Start in the middle and work out. Or anytime you're trying to divide things in sections equally. This way you know that you're not, if you start here and keep going like this, you have a tendency to kind of pull the fabric or be too slack. So I like to just kind of anchor it in the middle. And then that way I know that's non-negotiable and this is easier. It's like you break it up into these sections and then if something goes awry, you only need to deal with that one little section. You know the rest of it is anchored properly. So like I said, you're gonna fold it just past that seam line that we sewed, just past. And when we stitch it down, as long as we're to the right of that stitching, we'll land on the collar stand. But even if we don't, nobody's gonna see it in there. It's no big deal. Especially if you're kind of a beginner at sewing these necklines and shirt collars, you need to give yourself as many helping hands as possible. All right, so this one could be a little, little longer stretch here, but same thing, I try and find a middle, middle plot spot right there. Pin it down, just like that, and then do a couple more. You don't have to put a ton of pins in if you don't want, um, but, um, just do what's comfortable for you. Let's see, where's my notch on this one? It's right there, so I'm gonna try and keep those lined up. Just like that. And I just keep pinning. Make sure you're only turning under that quarter of an inch there. Make sure this is nice and flat back there. I can feel it. Open up that center front there and wrap around. Get rid of these some of these threads early on too. They're really hard to trim later on. Now you can see my collar stands hanging off a tiny bit right there. Now I could choose to fiddle with that and make sure it gets um, on better if I want. This amount, I'm not sure that would bug me so much. I might even kind of adjust it for the appearance that it's more on. But I'm telling myself also that since this is a women's shirt and this is the side that will get the buttons, the other one's gonna be buttoned over it. So I understand that we want perfection, but at the same time, it's good to also get done and, and get something that you have working, um, you know, that you can work on and have to launch from. For your next one and this way at least you can kind of get to the end of your shirt you can always fuss with this later even at the very end you know so be nice to yourself and give yourself little outs like that sometimes
so that you can kind of keep going in your project. Especially on a spot like this, that there's this is not a point of no return. Even if you finish the entire shirt, you can always come back to this if you want, if it really bugs you. All right, so here we go. Got a lot of pins in there. Let's make sure nothing's buckling. It might look like it because of the pins, but I can tell that that's nice and flat. Here we go. So now this next spot should be really easy. Um, and I know you probably just want to be like, all right, I'm set. I'm going to go sew. But I think you should see how I'm going to start and stop this because it uh, makes a nice finished product. Okay, are you ready for the last step? This is the best part. Um, and then I feel like this, I feel like sewing the collar this way. I do this for cuffs and other things like this where it needs to be clean, finished on the inside and the outside. You can apply this technique where you start from the inside of the garment and go to the outside. Um, so we've got our collar pinned and I noticed like right here, I have a little bit of buckling going on. Can you see that right there? And so I'm gonna kind of work on that a little bit. What I like to do is, like I said, I like to take out the little section that is the uh, problem. I'm gonna leave this right here. I don't wanna really monkey around with that, but I can turn the seam allowance under a tiny bit more, kind of pull it like this, make sure, like, is it really buckling there or is it something I can smooth out when I go to sew it? And it looks pretty, pretty easily smoothed out. That'll be fine. All right, so we're good to go. And um, now what I like to do is, I like to start at the center. And the reason I like to do that is, when you put your back tack right here, so I used to do this where I would start here and go along the folded edge there. But what happens is you're, you're back tacking right there. Now your machine doesn't typically like to back tack over things like this, especially when it's starting and it's a big thickness right there. And you might get like a ball of thread there or it may not look good or worse yet, you may want to adjust this someday and you have to remove a back tack right there that was a little bit messy and you run the risk of hurting your collar stand and making it kind of a pain to do so. So what I recommend is start at the center back neck. Plus this gets covered with the collar and no one really sees it. It's nice, it'll look nice and clean right there. All right, so I start here at the center back. You don't have to back stitch when you first start. Your pins may be a little pokey doing this because when we go back around, they're gonna be still right there when we're sewing over here. All right, so um, I'll put my pin cushion there. I like to kind of pull this a little bit and we keep things nice and smooth. I am in control of this. I am the boss of this collar. I want it to know so. You can sew right over your pins if you like. I feel like that is fine and um, doesn't really cause issues. So you can see like my seam is showing a little bit. So I'm just gonna pull this fold a little bit. Make sure I'm not pulling anything. Maybe unfold that seam allowance a little bit more. Make sure I don't create a little bump in the nice smooth line. You are on the home stretch, so just be really patient, do this little seam, and you won't have to do it twice. All right, so when I get to the edge here, I'm going to sink my needle down, press, lift my presser foot up, and pivot. And I might have to walk my hand wheel and my needle just to get it right in the right spot, but it doesn't look like I need to. So, but if you do, just turn your hand wheel towards you and st sew stitch by stitch. All right, so we're gonna turn and try and get a nice smooth curve here, especially because sometimes this wants to flatten out a little bit. And you can give it the illusion of being more of a smooth curve than maybe it was before. All right, so now here we are. This part should be a little easy, so just maintain a nice, even, parallel stitching line. But don't beat yourself up. Remember, this is on the underside of the collar. No one's gonna see this. You don't even need to do this top stitching, but at least it allows you to not have your back stitch at the center front. All right, so be careful of your pins. And here we go, we're gonna do our last little section. Here's this curve here again. Make sure that I get that. The chambray is very loosey-goosey. It really is moldable for better or worse. So sometimes it kind of works against me. All right, got that right on the edge there. I'm gonna lift up my presser foot, but my needle is down. Pivot. Got this pin here. I smooth it under there. Make sure it's nice and smooth. I 
I use, I'm, you can see I'm kind of smoothing and pulling. All right, we're almost there. Almost done with your shirt collar and collar stand. Now we're going to back stitch. Get our last pin out. Trim your threads, and then you get to inspect. All right, let's see how we did here. All right, so that's the inside. And it looks like I got the stitching on. Oh, I'm like in the ditch right here, but no one's going to see that. In the ditch right there. Because we already sewed the collar stand there, we're fine. There we go, let's see how it looks on the right side. And the more of these you sew, the better they get, especially you'll find that um, the quality variety varies between what fabrics you're using as well. This one's a pretty tricky fabric to sew with, but it's such a nice fabric. It's worth the effort. All right, so let's fold our collar stand down. You can see now we have our collar stand on the inside. I used to always make that mistake where I would accidentally put it on the outside. <laughs> All right, look at that, not bad. Hopefully you made sure your plackets were the same length before you put it on there. If not, hopefully they haven't hemmed it quite yet. All right, um, good job. I know that those are really tricky and intimidating, but just with a little bit of practice. And starting from the inside of the garment, working to the outside, it gives you a little bit of uh, extra help. And try this method on waistbands and cuffs and um, let me know what you think. Please like, um, subscribe, comment. I, it really helps the channel. I do these for free, so I really appreciate any um, feedback. And uh, if you ever want to sew with us live, uh, we'd love to have you. It's really fun. It's a really great group of sewists, and all levels are welcome. Thank you.